evening all of you today we are going to see an important point that is stopping potential with respect to photocell so this is a photocell here we connect a dc source the positive is given to the anode and the negative to the cathode of course you can have filament here to heat the cathode so now we define an important term for work function. Work function is the minimum energy required to release an electron from the cathode. That is called work function. So before light is allowed to pass through this opening and uh, touching the cathode, we adjust this voltage so that it is at the threshold of work function. That means any additional energy is given an electron is going to be released. So that's how we are adjusting this. So what we do now is we have adjusted exactly at the work function of the particular material. So now light is allowed to pass through this opening and it strikes the cathode. So now what will happen? Electrons will come out and reaches the anode. To limit the current, so there will be a maximum rating of the current that can be handled by the particular photo cell. So to limit the current, we can introduce an RS. RS means series resistance. Suppose if we want to see the current, you can introduce an ammeter, say microamps or milliamps, meter positive, negative. So because of light, there is an emission of electrons from the cathode and uh, that can be seen in the milliamps meter or microamps meter. It is going to be very very small current. We can use microamps. Okay. Now the question is, this is forward wire. That means positive is connected to the anode. This is anode and this is cathode. Okay. So as the intensity of the light increases, so above zero. So now this is varied above zero ohms. Okay. Now what we are doing is we are increasing the intensity of the light. So when the line, intensity of the light increases, the photo current also increases. The photo current is the number of electrons that is from cathode reaches the anode and the circuit is getting completed and that we can see in the milliamps meter. So that is photo current. So for a particular potential that you have set, the number of photoelectrons depends on the intensity of light that is given here. So this is first part, right? everything is positive, that means forward voltage and forward current. Now suppose if you want to stop this photo current, for it starts emitting a, a photo current, that is a, the cathode releases the electrons. Suppose I don't want to release electrons and I want to stop it. So just what you have to do is just reverse this potential. Instead of going forward by us, what you do is just reverse this as negative positive. Now you are going to give a reverse voltage. So in this case this polarity also will change. This will become plus and this will become minus and the current is going to be negligible. So instead of milliamps meter, you can use microamps meter here. So what happens is, when you reverse the voltage, at one particular voltage, the current is, the photo current is zero. That is, the cathode will not emit any electrons. Okay. The cathode does not release any electrons. So that potential is called stopping potential. And that potential is unique. For example, it can be minus 5, minus 25, minus 20, I don't know. But suppose say minus 10 volts is the stopping potential means for a particular material. Whatever may be the intensity, if you fix the intensity of light as I1, I2 or I3, when a reverse voltage is uh, given to the photo cell, all will converge to one single point that is called the stopping potential and it is fixed for the particular cathode, that particular material whatever you are using. 
the intensity can be anything you can set for i1 i2 i3 for forward bias also if you look into the graph it is increasing and at one point it gets saturated so no more uh, the photo current is released but one common thing you have to observe is for i1 for the intensity level 1 2 and 3 the stopping potential is going to be the same whereas for three different intensities the photo current is not same it is forward bias and you have a photo current the intensity i3 is greater than i2 and i1 but that, that's why i3 is having more photo current but when it comes to the stopping potential we are uh, testing out by giving a reverse voltage so when you give a reverse voltage what happens is you slowly increase that means this is reverse voltage slowly increased and at uh, one particular point one particular voltage reverse voltage there is no emission of electrons from the cathode that potential that is this potential this negative voltage is called stopping potential and it is an important uh, question for the board exam so whatever may be the intensity the stopping potential will be the same for a particular cathode material hope you have understood the concept of work function how a photocell behaves in the forward bias mode how it behaves in the reverse bias mode what happens when the intensity of light varies so when the intensity of light varies the photo current also varies whereas when you reverse the voltage all are going to converge at a one particular point where there is no emission of photo electrons and that particular potential reverse potential is called the stopping potential thanks for watching this video nandri